Madam Fox. Atina koe, Mr. Speaker, Likewise. and tina koutou ki te fare, koutou e haere a tina na mai ki tēnei fare, ki te uh, tūtuki ngā mahi o te tau, kei te mihi atu ki a koutou o ku hua mahi. A nōna kai te uh, tuku whakaro ki a rātou kua mene atu ki te pō i ngā rā, i ngā wiki, i ngā marama kua hipa atu nei. Tēnei te mihi atu uh, ki a rātou, kei roto i ngā ringa o te atua i tēnei wā uh, tēnā koutou. Uh, Mr. Speaker, um, we're here to speak about the PM statement, the PM statement about the future of this country. And I want to say clearly and loudly to the people of this nation that the Māori Party are here to add value not only to this parliament, but to our nation. We add value to this parliament when we work with the government of the day to ensure that the rights guaranteed under the treaty to Māori are upheld. And that's not just for Māori, that is for the benefit of this entire nation. Because those people who stand up and say that to do so is divisive, they need to think about that. Because in 1835, a collection of Māori chiefs declared this nation a sovereign nation. Under Te Whakaputanga, we declared this nation a sovereign entity on its own. And and five years later, we gathered at Waitangi, the birthplace of this nation, to enjoy a duality of nationhood, where two partners come together to celebrate living together in a pristine country. And when we talk about pristine, let's have a conversation about the RMA. Let's have a conversation that starts with Māori rights under the RMA, guaranteed to them in that treaty and upheld by this government and not put down as divisive, as not put down as some members and some parties would have us believe as excluding others. This is not about exclusiveness, this is about inclusiveness. And under the RMA, if we can guarantee the rights and the protection of kaitiakitanga in section six and section seven, then that is not just for the benefit of Māori, that is the benefit of this entire nation, and that needs to be celebrated. And that brings us to the argument over fresh water. Of much we have heard in the last couple of days from a particular party in question who says that this is a divisive element, that we are brown mailing the government, that the Māori Party is not serving the interests of this country. And I tell you that that is not us being divisive, that is this party being divisive. To go back to uh, Orewa and to make those speeches in front of a crowd of sympathisers and to come out and say that not two days after being at Ratana is divisive because if they want to make those claims over the treaty having to be pulled out of the RMA, then why didn't they say those things at Ratana in front of the Māori people? Now they need to stand up and own that because actually, do they vote on treaty settlements? No, they do not. Do they support the treaty? No, they do not. They use it as a tool to drive a wedge in this country and to split our nation. And it's not exclusive, it is inclusive. When we recognise the rights of Māori people in fresh water, then we recognise the rights of all of us. Because actually, the government will say that no one owns fresh water. Well, I tell you, if the regional councils in this country allocate fresh water, then they act like owners. When they allocate fresh water for the corporate needs of our farmers, of our industry, of our horticulture, and of those who want to bottle it and sell it for profit, then that is corporate corporate welfare, and when we stand by as the observers to the degradation of our rivers, then that is corporate, that is welfare, that is benefit fraud. That's exactly what that is. And we have to spend more public purse to clean up the rivers in this country so we can go back to the places where we spent our childhood swimming in the rivers of this nation and enjoy our time with our family, then that is corporate and benefit fraud. And that's what they are committing. The Māori Party are not advocating for the rights and interests of Māori so that we can be exclusive. That's so that we can be inclusive. And this country needs to stand up and recognise that recognising Māori rights as uh, guaranteed to them under the treaty ensures that our people can live in duality of nationhood in this country. That is value added to our nation, not a deficit theorising that is going on over in this quarter of the house. It is not deficit theorising. When we realise that to include Māori is inclusive, 
then we sit together in this country in the true understanding of what partnership means. And that's what we advocate for every single day when we come into this house. So I say to all that are listening that you have no need to fear because Māori have rights and interests recognised. There is no fear in that. That was the irrational fear that the Labour Party tried to perpetuate over the foreshore and seabed. What? That we couldn't go to the beaches if you dare give some rights to the Māori, well, lock up the doors, shut them now, keep your daughters away because the Māori are coming. And we should fear that. Right. That is the fear-mongering that goes on in this place when we do what is popular and not what is right. Because what is right is to recognise those values, those things, those privileges guaranteed under the treaty in which we came together to sign at Waitangi a partnership agreement. So let me tell you about that, because 60 years ago, Māori lived in this country next to its riverways as their source of life, as their mana o te wai, and we lived there in a pristine environment. And since the allocation of water, we have been merely observers to the degradation of our rivers and sat in on the sidelines while it has been allocated to the corporate benefit of those who produce our food. And that's not a bad thing. People need to produce food. We need to eat. We understand that, but it needs to be done in fairness. So if anybody thinks that that's exclusivity, it is not. It is inclusivity, and it allows all of us to live here together. Actually, I think we should hold back 40% of water allocation for the good of our community so that we can never over-allocate our waters, so that our waters will be pristine and we can live in a country where we value our green clean New Zealand. That's just the start, Mr Speaker, because the Māori Party are not just here for the benefit of Māori as people think. Yes, we advocate for Māori, but that's a good thing because we want Māori to be independent, not codependent on the government. The RMA is one area we can do that. The fresh water is another area we can do that. And we can work on the Marine Coastal Reserves Act because, yes, we need to have places that are held for the posterity of all of us, but not if it then further takes away the rights and privileges of Māori guaranteed under the treaty. Now, yes, we go on about the treaty all the time, and people say, oh, you're only about Māori, but it is about value add to this country, because what is wrong with a kaupapa Māori model of practice that upholds everyone's rights. When we guarantee the rights of Māori, we guarantee the rights of all in this country. That is not exclusive, that is inclusive, and we need to get that right. Which brings us to the TPP. We have been vocal over the TPP for a long time. Actually, in uh, Peter and Tariana's day, they sat and put out a uh, press release with the Greens objecting to the TPP because we didn't know what was in it. Now we know 6,000 pages of it. Now we know. Well, I tell you, we're not against free trade. We're just against fair trade, because if there is not a greater distribution of wealth to all peoples in this country, then what good is it? What good is it to have a free trade agreement if we have poverty in this nation? What good is it to have a free trade agreement if we have homelessness in this, in this nation? We have to have a structural intervention in our system so that all people can realise the benefits of free trade that it becomes fair trade. Our people should not be struggling to buy a loaf of bread, a block of cheese and a bottle of, of milk so that they can feed their children. And that is the real struggle that people feel today. The TPP has a clause in it called the, uh, the Treaty Clause that everybody's come to call it, and that guarantees the rights of our people but actually, it's up to the interpretation of the government, and we only need to look back at the 175 years gone hence to see that that is not always conducive to the thoughts of Māori. So if we have to rely on the government to interpret, well, we've seen what the Labour government do. They just change the law. We want to say to the national government, be careful. 
This may be the same clause that's been in every free trade agreement, but all those free trade agreements did not extend to IP, to biodiversity, to environment issues, and the Y262 still remains unrecognised today. So we say to the government, we do not support anything that breaches the rights of the treaty, not just for Māori, but for all New Zealanders. And that is what realising duality of nationhood is. Thank you, Mr Speaker.